Hello folks, today I will show you a few tips and tricks on using freeform modeling, so organical designs, which means smooth shapes and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do that uh, within Fusion 360, but that kind of relates to Inventor or other softwares as well, or other T-Splines applications. So uh, without further ado, let's go! Okay, so first off, just, let's just start with a shape and see what that is. So we go to model here, we go to create form, and we now get a, a special tool set here. Now, um, the first thing you want to know is that as soon as you're done with the shape, you want to click finish form. And when that is done, I'm just, just going to start off here with a small box, something like that. Okay, if I click here finish form, that's now a solid model. Uh, I can't really change that anyway. It's just the normal modeling tools. But what I can do is I can jump down here and I can say edit. Now you can see the toolbar here is back to this, this shape here. Just remember if you start to do too much, the timeline will kind of screw up. Um, anyways, so first off we have the create button here. We can create a few different types. We can create planes, uh, which lets us start off with a simple surface and, and then, then work our way from that. We can also do some, uh, some phases here, extrusions. So we, for example, we can extrude from a shape here and we now have a more advanced formed. Um, as well as revolve, which means that, yeah, you, you create a body around an axis or an edge. You can sweep or sweeping edges and sketching along a path. You can also loft making transitions between faces. Um, with that said, you can also add some symmetry, for example, if we want to create um, uh, copies of, of the model and, and so on. Now, in my case here, I already have uh, set up a few tools there that I think is important. First of all, the first one here is edit form. You use that a lot. So when, as soon as you click that, you can start to move here and you get this gizmo if you select a point, an edge, or, uh, or an, 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 an polygon, or I should say a, um, a segment. So let's just uh, play around here. You can see how the, sh the softer models behave. We can also um, uh, add some, some, some functions here. But the interesting part with these models is that they are defined by the amount of lines. So as soon as I move this line further away, let's just move the whole, the whole part here. Let's just move it further away. You can see that it gets rounder and rounder the further we go. It's because it's, it's long distances and there's not a lot of um, polygon or details um, controlling it. But as soon as we get sh uh, closer to things, um, everything get a little bit more sharper or more defined, I would say. So we can move things around. We can just make sure here, we can, uh, edit the shapes to, to basically whatever we want to do. But it, it requires a little bit of fiddling and, and uh, usually um, some tactics if you're new to this to, to create the kinds of shapes that you, that you desire. Um, anyways, I'm going to stop with that. I'm just going to click OK. Um, so you see here, I also have something that's called weld vertices. It could be interesting if we weld these together. Now, as you can see here, this mode now explains to me that it kind of doesn't work this way. So I need to... Now when it's smooth again, that means that we actually have a working, working solid here. Sorry, working surface. I'm just selecting more of these edges and I've now selected all of them. We go back to edit form. I can now drag them back and forth if I want to, but if I hold down alt, it's the default key, one, and then drag, I can actually kind of extrude more details, which I think is pretty cool. So um, I'm gonna do that and then do it again. And you can see now that it, it kind of starts to be a this, this sharp line. So let's just make it a little bit, um, move it around here, hold on alt, create a new shape. So we're kind of just moving these shapes around now. 
Now there's a, as you can see here, we actually have a sharp edge here. Hmm, why is that? Well, usually when you do these holes, so for example, if I make a hole here, I make a hole here, the, um, the edge, the, the um, end of an edge will be, you can see here the bold, that actually means that it's now um, uh, sharp. But as soon as I um, do something with it, it, it kind of um, becomes smooth again. Now, th this is called that a edge is creased. So as you can see here, th this is due to, I had a box before and a plane and I started to just go crazy around that. Now, if I want to have this smooth again, I can select those two, I go up to modify. We have something called here, crease and uncrease. So um, creasing, as you can see, creates, creates a sharp edge between faces, but uncrease restores that function. So in this case, we got these yellow lines that I didn't want to have creased. I can now click uncrease, voila. We now have a smooth transitions between these shapes here. Pretty cool, right? So those are maybe basically the, the, the easier tools. Uh, oh yeah, of course, we, we have functions here where we can weld. So we go here, we say um, weld vertices. So we'll weld that one to that one. Now they are welded. Let's just, um, we don't even have to click repeat. Let's just, Click that one to that one. And we can then weld this one to this one. We now kind of need to add some more details because if I just keep welding here, it's going to become really strange. But let's, let's try it. Let's do it. There we go. Now we have an issue here with the edge not connected to anything. We're going to weld these together here. Now everything is connected to everything. It's not perfect, but it's okay. It's acceptable for now, at least. So let's just cancel all of that. And um, I also just want to show you here another tool. So if I double click on this uh, end of an edge, so you can see here we have an inside. I can now actually click here, go to tools. I have something called fill hole. So I can now fill that hole if I want to. Not perfect, but it, it kind of works. And another way of controlling that is to use this function here, bridging. So that means that we now bridge between uh, holes. I usually t tend to do one face here in between. I think that's much easier, more elegant. Again, double click, we can now um, fill that hole. And the same with this one. Repeat, fill hole. Voila, again, more control. Now, um, let's actually see what we can use this for. If I now finish this form, I will probably get a warning because of the strange things down here, but I actually didn't. So um, we're now back. You can see we're in, in, in a next step here. I can start to create, uh, let's say I want to create a sketch. I'll create it over here. Um, I'm going to create a form. Now, this can now actually be treated as a solid. So my shape here is, is now a pure solid. I can, I can treat it just as any other um, solid model that I've been working with. Of course, you're gonna get some errors if you try to do too stupid stuff, which I usually do. Um, something like that. You can, of course, you can add your, um, add all your other cool stuff. Uh, let's, let's, for example, create a hole. We can do that on this side. We're gonna move it around. Play with the diameters. We actually need to extrude these back here. Okay, the whole. So we're, what we actually end up with is a solid that we can start working with. And as I said, we can jump back here to the edit function here um, and do some editing here. It's gonna be a little bit weird when I do, um, but it works, I can do it. I'm just gonna move this around like so. Click finish form, if I now jump back, you can see now that the history is, is intact. So that's pretty cool. Let's move on to a more practical example. So let's just start off with a really simple shape. And let's imagine that, I mean, yeah, of course, I'm just using here the edit tool. I'm going to click down Alt and I'm going to start to drag out uh, parts. So let's say that I want to create something like a, um, something like a connector between several parts. We're going to, um, keep on doing this. 
something like that and we can then crease this here just click crease we now get a hard shape here so let's imagine this connects with something and um, we're just gonna start to edit here the shape because we might want to have um, some other connector over here let's imagine that this is some sort of um, well, I don't know. Okay, let's say that this is a um, uh, bike connector. So we have some sort of tablet that we will attach over here or something similar. And we then need to have um, like a, a bracket down here. So we're actually going to need to do something like this. We can now crease this side here because we want to have a sharp edge over there. Something like that. I would of course need to move this around a little bit more, create something a little bit rounder. It doesn't have to be rock and science because we will add some details later. But what I want to do is, I'm gonna click here, uh, extrude even more. I want to do this on both sides. So now I didn't remove, remember how much I moved it, but let's say that's probably equal. So we now have a smoother transition here. Um, we, we can start to control these shapes a little bit more. Let's just say that this tablet holder is supposed to look a little bit bigger, a little bit tougher in the design. I'm not sure if tougher is the right word, but just weirder. Let's make it weird, really weird. Um, let's move that around. Now, the thing here with these lines is that they kind of uh, are defined by how you um, control them. So the more details we add, so for example, if I add here, um, on this here, we, we select all of these and I add another edge. It kind of defines now even more that edge over here. So this now uh, allows me to have a sharper angle over here because we have more details explaining where to put the shapes. Um, let's do something like this. We want to um, drag those in together. We want to have a quite narrow shape, maybe not that narrow. Now I'm, I'm doing way too much stuff here for this case. But again, let's say here that we're now done. We, we created the part that we needed. Um, I just want to show you that we actually can treat this now like a solid. So I'm going to click finish form. It's going to process a little bit. Now we can start to actually do uh, some, some pretty fun things here. We can create a chamber here for example. Cut that away just a little bit. But uh, maybe even more interesting, we can create now um, some sort of sketch on this side here. I want to create a sketch on that one. Oops. So let's do that. Let's just create a hole here. Um, so let's say that the bike rail is uh, that diameter. We're going to make it all the way through. Something like that. We now have these here that we can create a um, fillet on, for example. Or, yeah, maybe it should be a chamfer instead. Small one over there. Treat it over here with one millimeter, something like that. We can of course add stuff here now we want to, but um, in my case, I kind of feel like I'm pretty done here. Um, just for example, let's do an offset here from the origin and offset it to this side here. Just so I can make a sketch here, something like that. Let's now create a sketch and let's say here that we have a, a special pattern for the connector of the tablet or whatever should be here. 
Um, so we kind of want to do a few, some sort of parts. I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I'm doing something, and hopefully it will just show you some 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 ways of doing it. So let's repeat line, blah blah. blah. Let's go and do some mirroring. these, all of these, all of these, all of these, and all of these with that one. Oops, we should go with more. That should be fine. So we now have a form here. I can now start to extrude that, cut it away into my model. Of course, I can cut away the whole model if I want to, but that's that's not what we're trying to do here. Um, so something like that. And of course we can start to, let's just bring that sketch up again. Maybe we want to have some sort of uh, screw adapter here or some sort of hole. Um, I feel happy with that. I'm going to extrude that even deeper. Um, let's say over there. I kind of want to hide that sketch again. Let's do some, just for fun, let's do some threading here. Um, on this one. And for good measures, let's just do some chambering on these types here. But the whole concept here is to show you that you can quite easily go from a, um, a, a form and do some interesting stuff with it. So let's just make a little one like that. Now, the cool part here is that, sure, I've done a lot of edits here. Maybe I wanna um, change this hole here that I did in the beginning. I wanna go in and edit that feature. Kinda don't want it to be that deep. I wanna have it, let's say, 90 millimeters instead. Oh, sorry, not depth, I meant diameter. Let's say I want to have it 50 instead. Excellent, I can do that. So that's why I really love the histogram here. Now what's really cool is that I can actually go in here and I can go edit the form and I can start to change these shapes here. Um, unfortunately, I seem to have some sort of bug, which means that I still see the old model here. So I kind of want to show you how that works. So let's go here over to bodies. If I hide the body, go back here, click edit. Now I can change all the stuff I want to without displaying all the new models. So um, let's just, what? That's, that's crazy. It does it again. I think it's some sort of bug. I can't, can't really figure it out. Let's do this again, finish the form. Let's just 